Welcome to City Roundup, brought to you by the City of Pensacola, with your host, Saida Rosa. City Roundup is your one-stop shop for everything having to do with the City of Pensacola. And now, Saida. Good morning, and thanks for joining us for this episode of City Roundup. I'm your host, Saida Rosa, with the City of Pensacola. We'd like to start our show with a message from Mayor Grover Robinson. Earlier this week, the mayor spoke with reporters about his plans for the Downtown Improvement Board. He's looking for people to fill three upcoming vacancies on the board. Uh, so we're looking for people to, to uh, give us nominations. We'll have three places up, and so uh, we're looking for three new members. Obviously, we'd like to be working with them on what we could do about some parking and uh, how we uh, perhaps implement going forward some kind of strategy and working together the two different apps, making sure that people understand better which app is which and how to, uh, how to deal with that and what are the right hours and what are the right prices. If you're on social media, make sure to follow Mayor Robinson. Just search Pensacola Mayor on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Great things are on the way for the city of Pensacola. The mayor and city council have been working together to create a strategic plan for the city. In this episode of Our City News Show, hosts Tanya Vaden and John Scanlon talk about the progress of the plan. They also give us a rundown of Memorial Day events and tell us who is deserving of congratulating. Those topics and more coming up right now. Welcome back to another episode of Our City News Show. I'm your host, John Scanlon. And I'm Tanya Vaden, and we're here outside City Hall to talk about the strategic plan the mayor and council have been working on. They recently held a workshop here, and came up with a draft that includes a mission statement, set of values, and criteria for prioritizing issues among other items. It can be viewed on our website at cityofpensacola.com. John Streetmatter, director at the Leadership Research Institute, helped facilitate the discussion. Prior to the meeting, he met with the mayor and each council member to gather their input to create the framework for the strategic plan. The council used the framework to fill in the parts that created the draft of the strategic plan. Again, it's on our website, cityofpensacola.com. It will go back to the City Council at their meeting on June the 13th. We have a lot of congratulations to issue in today's episode. First, we'll start with Mayor Grover Robinson. The Florida League of Cities named him a 2019 Home Rule Hero. Home Rule is the ability for the city to address local problems with local solutions with minimal state interference. Congratulations, Mayor. Well, we would also like to congratulate Florida West, Scott Luth. Luth is a CEO and president of the Economic Development Organization. He was recently named one of North America's top 50 economic developers of 2019. Last one, congratulations to Steve Koalas of the Pensacola Fire Department. He was promoted from a firefighter to a lieutenant on May 6th. Well, movies in the Park begins this weekend, so bring your blankets and chairs and watch Field of Dreams Underneath the Stars at Community Maritime Park on May 24th. Hill Kelly has teamed up with the City of Pensacola again this year to provide the outdoor movie series. We have concessions from local food trucks and parking is free. We have also partnered with the Pensacola Blue Wahoos for this event, so come on out early to meet Kazoo and play the inflatable baseball game before the movie. For the list of dates and movie titles, visit PlayPensacola.com. Again, our first movie is Friday, May 24th, and begins when the sun goes down. Then on May 26th, come back to Community Maritime Park for Blues on the Bay. Not Quite Fab will be gracing us with their renditions of the Beatles' most popular hits. Concerts begin at 6 p.m. On a separate but related note, Pensacola Civic Band will take the stage at Hunter Amphitheater in Community Maritime Park for the fourth annual Pensacola Memorial Day concert on May 27th. This is a very special event because Pensacola resident Pearl Harbor survivor Frank Emond will join the record books as the oldest living conductor. The show begins at 5 p.m. So lots of great events happening this weekend at Community Maritime Park. If you're looking for a place to cool down, City of Pensacola owned pools also open this weekend. The pool at Roger Scott and Cecil T. Hunter will remain open through Labor Day. Visit us online at playpensacola.com to find out times, class schedules, and costs for each pool. Well, before we go, we want to remind you one last time about our summer camps. They start on May 28th. Summer day camps are offered at Cobb, Fricker, Gold Point, Vickery, and Woodland Heights Resource Centers. Swimming, field trips, games, and outdoor fun await at our Play Pensacola summer camps. We also offer a variety of specialty camps to enhance your child's skills and provide them with a fun, enriching summer camp experience. 
Visit PlayPensacola.com for more information on how to sign up. That's all we have for you on this episode of Our City News Show. We thank you for watching, and we will see you next, next week. week. On this edition of City Spotlight, we give you an inside look on what's happening after your recyclables are picked up from your curbside. Sanitation Services' Ronnie Harris allows us to tag along for a ride to ECUA's Materials Recycling Facility. Got me a film crew with me. Me, movie star. If I'd known you was going to be doing all this, I wouldn't have volunteered. Hi, I'm Ronnie Harris and I work for the City of Pensacola and I'm an equipment operator too. Walk me through the process of what happens after the guys who are out collecting recycles uh, come over here. Well, they, they go collect the recyclables and they bring them up here as you filmed earlier and they dump them in our hopper container. We pack anywhere normally around 35 to 38,000 pounds in this rig that we're in now. That's a day's worth of recyclables. And then we pull it out. Uh, clean it up, transfer it, and then uh, shut the door and we transfer it out to where we're going right now, to the recycle center. Do you do any of the routes at all, or are you strictly just uh, hauling? Yes, ma'am, I just drive the big rigs. I've done graduated up from all that. Right now we're towing about 25,000 pounds. Normally we haul anywhere from 30, 30, I'd say from 35 to 40. Back again, recyclables. We are pulling this big building and uh, we back up amongst all the other recycling. We open the rear door and then we operate the truck and unload the truck, and shut our door and come back. Okay, that's it, that's it. For more episodes of Our City Spotlight and News Show, visit our YouTube channel. Search City of Pensacola. We'll be right back after this. Cooking with natural gas is more controlled than using an electric range. But more importantly, they're less expensive to operate. Don't get burned with electric. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Natural gas homes are in demand. Here's what home builders have to say. One of the major roles of us using the tankless water heaters and gas cooktops is because of trying to utilize energy efficient features in our homes. Without reservation, our owners that have moved into a home where we use this natural gas have always been happy that we've used this and very satisfied with the product. Natural gas from Pensacola Energy, the clean, reliable, earth-friendly choice. We now turn to our green tip of the week. Repurpose household items. When you give items a second life, it keeps them from ending up in the landfill. Use jars to store other food. Tin cans can be turned into tea light holders. Use your imagination. The city is looking for great people to be a part of our team. This week's feature job is for an auto equipment mechanic. The person who fills this job will be responsible for automotive and equipment mechanical work approaching the journeyman level. Learn more and apply online at PensacolaCityJobs.com. Some food for thought for your Friday, and this episode of Coastal Cooking Quick Bites, host John Scanlon from Pensacola Energy teamed up with Chef Brian from Kingfisher to make Kingfisher coleslaw. On this episode of Coastal Cooking Presents Quick Bites, we have Chef Brian from Kingfisher making Kingfisher coleslaw. Stick around and find out how it's done. Welcome to Coastal Cooking Quick Bites, brought to you by Pensacola Energy. Welcome to Coastal Cooking Presents Quick Bites. I'm your host, John Scanlon, and I'm here with a very special guest. We have Chef Brian from Kingfisher. Brian, thank you so much for being on the show. What do you have for us today? Uh, today we have Kingfisher coleslaw. Um, it is kind of a classic style coleslaw made from scratch. Excellent. I can't wait. And you guys are in, I guess, the old Slips building at 1500 Barrancas Avenue. Uh, you've renovated the place. It looks fantastic inside. Uh, I've been by to eat. Excellent food. You guys are doing a great job. What made you decide Pensacola? Uh, Pensacola is the place that my wife and I fell in love with just a few years ago when her parents moved here. We were living in New Orleans and uh, they started thinking about retiring in Florida. And uh, I guess on the, one of their road trips, they stopped in Pensacola and bought a house. So <laughs> we're like, all right, we need to be closer to the family. It was here or Toledo, Ohio. And uh, I think my parents are going to move down here pretty soon, too. So oh, that's excited. nice. Yeah. That, not, a, not a hard choice on that one, huh? No. <laughs> no. Well, excellent. So I love coleslaw. Um, and I know we were just talking, a lot of times you just buy it in a bag, you buy it pre-made. 
uh, I can't wait to see how you, how you do it from scratch. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Um, a couple nice techniques involved with making coleslaw from scratch. You know, uh, one is making a mayonnaise, which is kind of a fun culinary uh, technique. And the other one is just using a nice slicer and getting some knife, nice, uh, good knife cuts in there um, just to make it pretty and have a good mouth feel when you eat it. So yeah, I'm excited to get going. So, you know, a uh, good place to start is an egg, actually. Um, start of many great, many great recipes starts with an egg. And here we're just gonna use uh, one egg yolk, uh, whatever kind of eggs you use at home, uh, whether it's, you know, from the grocery store or farmer's market or whatever, it all works the same um, in terms of uh, what's going on inside. You know, there's a lot of fat, so we're gonna get a lot of richness just from that yolk. And it's also gonna act as an emulsifier so that when we're adding the water elements, you know, like vinegar and lemon juice, together with the oil elements, we're gonna end up with a nice thick sauce instead of just, uh, you know, separated out stuff, which, you know, if we were just to pour the oil into all the water, it would just be like oil and water. There's a difference between a good coleslaw right there. Yeah, I know, yeah, and you can do it just <laughs> with, you know, just moving it around, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get the egg yolk in there. Every time you see an egg, you always definitely wanna add a little bit of salt, whatever the recipe is. And then we're also gonna add some black pepper. So why is that? Oh, for the salt? Um, well, even in uh, sweet recipes, like a creme brulee, um, it's a good idea to have a little bit of salt in with the egg because it really brings the flavors out. Okay. Or, or a cookie or anything like that. Um, you know, just like salt will accentuate the flavors in savory food. A little bit of salt accentuates all the flavors and also in sweet, sweet okay. uh, bacon and pastry. So salt and pepper on the egg. Um, since we've got dry spices going in there, I'm just gonna do our celery seed right now because that's uh, one of the things that we put in our coleslaw that is just a little bit unique. It's not over the top. It's not anything that's never been done before, <laughs> but we kind of like it um, in there. The celery seed, I think it's just kind of nice. You just have to be a little bit careful with the celery seed because if you use too much, it can get pretty bitter mm. pretty quickly. So now we get to break the egg yolk. And uh, I'm just gonna stir it a little bit as I add the lime juice, or sorry, lemon juice. Because lemon juice will start to cook the egg, as will the sugar actually. So you just wanna move it around a little bit. You don't have to get too crazy. And then I'm gonna add the vinegar. Oh, what and, kind of vinegar is that? Oh, red wine vinegar. Okay. So about a teaspoon of lemon juice, teaspoon of red wine vinegar here. And then I'm gonna say a teaspoon and a half of Dijon mustard. You can use any mustard that you have in the house. But I like Dijon. It gives that little kick. That's yeah, it's a... really sharp and I love mustard. I have a reputation for using mustard a lot and this is a great way to use it. Not only because it adds a good flavor because also it acts as an emulsifier. So the egg yolk and the mustard are both very good emulsifiers. So basically we're gonna add the oil in here it's gonna help to create our mayonnaise. And that's the emulsification where the water molecules are suspended within the fat molecules. Or actually, I think that's wrong. I think it's the fat molecules suspended within the water <laughs> molecules. Uh, but anyway, it gets you that nice mayonnaise. And here we have uh, canola oil. And this is a half a cup of canola oil. And if I wanted to make a full-fledged mayonnaise, I would probably use closer to almost two cups, mm -hmm. which seems like a lot of oil, and it is, but it just kind of shows you the ratio when you're making mayonnaise that it's like eight to one oil to mm -hmm. um, wet ingredients, and the, the thicker, the more you add the oil, the thicker it's gonna get. But the fact that we're adding less oil here, we're gonna actually not, it's not actually really gonna be a mayonnaise, per se, because it's not thick enough. We haven't added enough oil, but it will be kind of a really loose mayonnaise, which is gonna be really nice. Like you're saying, almost like a dressing. Like uh, a dressing, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you know, Caesar dressing just starts this way. A lot of dressings start this way. You could do a lot of dressings the same way without the egg to make a vinaigrette, but still using a little bit of mustard and maybe a little bit of minced shallot in with your vinegar. And then you have a nice dressing. You can put some Italian seasonings in there and make, that's how we make our Italian dressing at the restaurant, uh, which is also vegan. Um, so there, that's a pretty nice looking sauce already. I'll, I'll say this, it, 
I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm amazed right now because you poured that steadily <laughs> while stirring it. I, I couldn't do either of those. Right. I, mean, I need two hands. I, yeah. That was awesome. And that's a good place to kind of grab a friend and say, hey, could you help me out with this? <laughs> also, putting the bowl on this little tray is good. Or if your bowl doesn't have a little foot on it, you know, a lot of chefs will kind of do, do that and then do like mm. that if you just have a regular bowl. And then you can set it right in there. And then th that way you don't necessarily need a friend oh, absolutely. to hold it. But if you have a friend, more the better. Buttermilk, was, we use a lot of this at the restaurant. I was kind of surprised how much we actually started going through, but <laughs> uh, this is one of the ways that we use it. And it's not the only way. Uh, hush puppies and m marinating fish and some other things that we'll be doing. So you make a lot of your dressings. Are all your dressings homemade at the restaurant? Yeah, everything. Everything is homemade there. The ketchup is the one thing we don't do homemade. Hmm. But everything else is. So. Well, I've had, you had the, I think it was the pineapple habanero uh, hot sauce. And it was incredible. It, was, it had more pineapple than habanero. It was, it was really, really good. Thanks. Uh, yeah. And that was homemade as well. And we talked about that day. And it's really, it was good. And especially on your, on your uh, fries, which are almost like, or their chips. Yeah. And it, mm -hmm. It's incredible. Yeah, a lot of people like to put that on the chips. And, you know, my neighbor um, grows peppers, but she doesn't really like to eat spicy food. So. <laughs> She gives them to us, and the bartender Dave was like, "Man, you should do a pineapple habanero hot sauce." And I was like, "All right, you got a pineapple?" And he's like, "Yeah." And he went over to his house and got it. You don't see it very often. You see the mango and, you know, and other added flavors. The the pineapple is a really good mix. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Thanks. So what I did there is cored out a cabbage. So I don't know if you saw that, but <laughs> I took that right there and I cut it in half. And once you cut the cabbage in half, then you have a core. And you, what you can do is just take a V cut like that and cut the cabbage like that. So now everything you have here, we can use for our coleslaw. And this is just a little slicer that I have that you can get at most Asian markets. And uh, you can just slice the cabbage like this. It's also called a mandolin. Um, so it looks pretty simple. I mean, there's different versions. You're just slicing this up. You've already made your dressing right, for the most part, correct? Uh, yep. Now we're putting the vegetables in. There's no excuse not to be able to take a great coleslaw to a picnic now. I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> right? And you can say, I made this from scratch. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the idea is that when you do this, it's going to taste noticeably better than, than when you just get it pre-made. And I think that's... That's kind of our whole idea and, you know, we're trained chefs so we can pull it off. Um, but, you know, also if we say, you know, we can buy something that's better than we can make, then there's no point. Absolutely. But we think that this is really good. We're, we love it. And um, so the red cabbage is going to be uh, three cups here and the Green cabbage, or sorry, the red cabbage. The green cabbage is going to be three cups, and the red cabbage is going to be maybe about a cup. Mm. Yeah. And then don't do this too far ahead. Just do this an hour ahead or two. Keep everything if crisp. You can. Or... And it'll just, yeah, keep everything crisp. And the red cabbage has a tendency to kind of make everything turn purple. Mm. So if I were, you know, you could even take a little bit less than that if you wanted to. Um, and then you want to have some carrots in there, I think, to make it colorful. And this is the dangerous thing, you know, <laughs> you get the teeth in there. You just have to kind of be careful in practice. These things also come with safety guards too. Uh, but I just like to hold it at, and cut it long here. And I just do about a half cup of carrot. Oh, it's too crazy. And then you can go down there in the ca carrot. And then this looks like a lot of cabbage. So I'm going to increase the total salt to about um, one teaspoon total there. It's always good to season as you go, you know, season a little bit <laughs> at the start of the recipe, season a little bit at the middle of the recipe. This one, I don't think we'll need any more. So that just kind of needs to marinate for a little bit. And so we have chef Brian, uh, he's going to actually make an, the, a Kingfisher platter for us. He's going to do three episodes. This will be the first one. Uh, for the coleslaw, and actually you can watch them in any order, uh, but we'll do coleslaw, a fried mullet, 
Uh, and what's your other dish that you're going to be making? Cheese grits. Cheese grits. Oh, that's Cheese a staple grits. in the South. So uh, not only watch this one, make sure you watch all the other ones. Uh, and this is at Kingfisher. It's at 1500 Barancas Avenue. Uh, they're open Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then on Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. All day. All day long. Live music on most weekends. Uh, you can go to their website at uh, kingfishersandwiches.com. Uh, make sure you follow them on social media. I know you guys have a uh, Facebook, you have Instagram, uh, all under Kingfisher, and you can find out their their special menu items. Uh, they could have extended hours, uh, just uh, depending on how the weather. Uh, is that this is pretty much done, correct? Yep, coleslaw done. <laughs> That's easy. Well, thank you so much for being on the the show with me today, uh, Brian. Uh, we really appreciate it. I can't wait to try this coleslaw, and uh, make sure you check out all the other episodes. Uh, thank you for watching Coastal Cooking Presents Quick Bites. This has been Coastal Cooking Quick Bites, brought to you by Pensacola Energy. A quick reminder before we go, City Hall will be closed on Monday, May 27th in observation of Memorial Day. This will cause a slight change in the weekly trash routes. Monday trash routes will be picked up on Tuesday, May 28th, and Tuesday trash routes will be picked up on Wednesday, May 29th. Thursday and Friday trash routes will not be affected by the holiday schedule. That's all we have for this episode of City Roundup. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you, same place, same time, next week. This has been City Roundup with Saida Rosa. City Roundup is the city of Pensacola's one-stop shop for everything having to do with Pensacola. Join us again each Friday at 8 a.m. for more of City Roundup.